People of YouTube, welcome to my channel. I'm Aaron, a software startup CEO who believes Tesla Solar's customer service is so poor, I mention it on a video that's not even about Tesla. On this video, I'm gonna have a little fun deep diving into Span's app. It's fun for me because this is what I do for a living. I lead teams who create software products. And while the video may come off negative, you need to understand that this is the only smart subpanel that offers any of the features that I'm able to provide commentary on. Any negativity towards the software is really just constructive criticism. There is no other product that does what Span does. So let's jump into the software and check it out. All right, let's bring the app up. When I first log into the app, you'll notice an error message suggesting that I contact Span. Um, this is due to my setup not being complete. Um, we're still trying to get the ethernet from the Span panels to the gateways. I know this is a video about the deep dive of the app, but I do have a small piece of architectural opinion that I'd like to let you folks know about, because this could impact your installation. Your SPAN subpanels have to communicate with your Tesla Solar Gateway. This makes perfect sense. The Gateway has information about the number of batteries you have, what their percentage of utilization is. The Gateway also has access to inverter information so it can see how many watts your inverters are generating. However, in most cases, your Tesla Gateway be, will be connected to your home network either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. And SPAN requires that the panel be hardwire Ethernet connected to your gateway. Doesn't that seem a little redundant? The gateway is already on your network. So is your SPAN. Now it's quite possible there's information that's available via a different API that is only available on the Ethernet connection of the gateway. However, when I connect to the gateway's web server on my local network, it appears to have all the data that Spam would need to operate. So I'm not quite sure why we need this redundant cable run. It's likely Spam's CAN support response will be, well, the Ethernet is faster than Wi-Fi. And that's true. But Span is not a product where milliseconds count. But what do I know? I'm just some guy that says toodles on YouTube videos. Let's just get back to the app. This is, in essence, the homepage of the app. And as I scroll down, you'll notice just a couple of the circuits who are using the most energy. Um, I am using the air conditioner right now. The heat is running. It's a little chilly. It's in Florida. Uh, I'm still not connected to the gateways, so it's not detecting any battery percentage. Um, I'm also not receiving any inverter data from the gateways, so I'm not showing any of that as well. As we scroll down, you'll see how much you use this week by device type and energy, and then some information on how the grid got its energy. Um, this is my first bit of feedback on the home page. Sure, this information is valuable to see at one time, but do we really need it occupying home page space within the app? I kind of see where they're coming from in their user interface design process. They were probably grasping for data points that they could show on the home page. And a bit of advice here is if you can't figure out what you want to show, instead of showing random data points like this, you're probably better off just showing nothing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Notice the navigation is at the bottom of the screen. The next place we're gonna visit is the circuit screen. This is the circuit screen in the app. It is sorted by what usage currently uh, descending. And we'll scroll here and you'll see a list of my circuits. If I wanna drill into, let's say, this GFCI circuit, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. We're then greeted by a NAG. And within this NAG, it's suggesting that we describe what components 
make up this circuit. Um, I'm kind of irritated by the snag. I wish it would just get out of my way. Every time you visit the detail of a circuit, you will be greeted by that nag. And as we scroll through the circuit, you'll see how much of your overall energy usage this circuit has done. So this has used 0.4%. And then finally, over the past 24 hours, how many kilowatt hours? Next, we will visit the feed screen. And I went ahead and I turned on and off um, a circuit a few times to fill up this feed screen. Really, the feed screen is their attempt at showing you some sort of logging uh, within the app. Um, as I turn on and off circuits, you can see that in the feed. However, there is likely a lot of log data that we do not have visibility uh, in the app for. For example, users logging in and logging out, settings being changed within the app, and finally, diagnostic information like CPU temperatures, fan RPMs, or any other data used to troubleshoot the device. My recommendation to SPAN would be to replace the feed system with a proper logging system that included the same information that's in the feed. And finally, the last main menu item option is shortcuts. When you bring that up, this brings us to one of the first big issues with the app. You'll notice on the top left, I am visiting panel two, and it's suggesting that I switch my home. The user interface design team at SPAN never thought a home would install more than one SPAN. Having issues with multi-tenancy is a common design anti-pattern. I have two SPANs installed, and since multi-tenancy for SPAN panels is not currently supported in the app, I have to switch my home to panel number one. So how I do that is by selecting switch home, and then I switch to panel one, and now we're on my other panel. The next items under shortcuts, also known as settings, are things like members. Think of members as users. You can invite multiple users by email address to manage and view your spans. Alexa helps you configure Alexa support. Get help allows you to contact support and then all settings. All settings seems to be a continuation of the existing settings that were already under shortcuts. About the only thing different here is you're able to set up the internet connection um, as well as view the software version. And that's the next piece of feedback. Um, if I go to software and serial, it will show my serial number, so I'm not going to do that. However, if you go to software, all it will do is show you the installed version. There is no way for you to force a software update through the user interface of the app. And SPAN's likely feedback is going to be, well, Aaron, it checks automatically. Why do you need to do that? Well, it's true, the device can and should be checking for updates automatically. In some support situations, you'll want the customer to be able to force the update via a user interface option. Next, you've got the ability to turn simple bug fixing into a big win for your company. If you display release notes within the application after an update has occurred. Imagine that you likely created the bug, then you fixed it. And at the end of it, you got a win because you told people about it. All right, now I need to talk about the most interesting aspect of the application's design. Uh, to do this, I'm going to jump into circuits. I do seem to remember in SPAN's marketing literature that you are able to prioritize which circuits received power based on your battery's levels. So as I'm looking at the circuits here, I do not see any way to change or view that priority. And if I select 
a random circuit, I'm greeted with the nagging, and I still do not see anything about the priority, nor is there a button for me to select to do this. I started to think maybe this was an installer-only option because it does appear that the electricians have a different app that they use to manage your device than you do. But when I was under shortcuts, I saw this backup icon up in the top right. Let's select that. And here is where that is set. So you have your must-have circuits. These circuits will run until you run out of battery. If you swipe to the right, you'll have nice to have circuits. These will turn off once your battery hits 50%. And then finally, non-essential circuits. These will always be off in a backup scenario. It simply does not make sense that this configuration occurs outside of the circuit screen. I literally used this app for hours before I figured out where the setting was. My recommendation to Span would be check the makeup of your UI design team. You should have, of course, a designer, a product person, maybe an electrician, and several customers working with you side by side to make sure the user interface makes sense. Do not leave it to the software development team to figure out the UI, and also do not leave it to your product team alone to determine the UI. You need to figure out a way to move the backup configuration inside of the circuit system within the app. Another way to think about application design is that Everybody is wrong. The development team is wrong because they're focused on getting minimum viable product out the door. The product team is wrong because they think they know what they're doing. The electricians are wrong because they're not app experts. The customer is wrong because they've never built a product before. And so by assuming everybody is wrong, it will allow you to create the largest group as possible to get as many data points as possible and then determine the least wrong solution to create your user interface. I only give this feedback because I want Span to succeed. And I have to admit, it's kind of fun doing my day job for some other company. Even with the items I identified, it's a really good product. With a leadership team as well as support team, that also wants to see Span succeed as a company. And I do have another positive note to say about Span. If you saw in my earlier videos, I had one unit that was dead on arrival. They shipped a replacement motherboard for it and it was also dead on arrival because the fans came loose during shipping. The second board sent by Span was packed in a beautiful Pelican case. The board was installed, the span now works flawlessly, except I stuck one of my fingers in the fan and it went toodles. 